Welcome back to episode 348 of the Guiding Guns Podcast. I'm your host, Troy. And I'm your other host, Doug. We use this podcast to talk about guide guns and the responsible Christian gun owner's interest on this week's show. We'll be talking about unconstitutional rules versus laws by bureaucrats, uh, or not laws by bureaucrats, but law, rules by bureaucrats. Are they different, Doug? Is, is an unconstitutional rule uh, the same thing as a law? Uh, no. No. Well, sometimes people pretend they are. Oh, yeah, they, they think it is, and some people yeah. would have you believe it, it is. Yeah. We'll get into that in just a second. First of all, we'll think of bandwidth sponsors, Primary Arms. They have been supporting us We're going on two years now. I can't believe it's been that long. It just seems like the other day that they started started supporting us, but then all already been two years. I just can't, cannot fathom it at all, and I am sorely trying to put things together there we go if you've not checked out primary arms please do they uh support us and a majority of the other firearms radio network uh shows as well and so you can find out more about primary arms at primaryarms.com if you use the code frn forward slash pa something <laughs> i done moved it i don't know well it's on it's a link in our show notes we'll have it there for you that you can click on it helps out the you know the numbers for frn that uh, you guys use that link it shows where it's coming from that's how they track if their money is being well spent apparently they think it is because they are still supporting us after two years so that's good good thing to do we appreciate it we appreciate it much but they have all kinds of cool stuff they just came out uh, back on the 10th with a whole um, lot of new products that they were bringing to the market and so and you go uh, let's see here i'm trying to work on three screens at the same time so i get a little lost but they came out with some new uh, stuff here. It's called Finally Here Odyssey 2023. See that? Click on it. And these are new products for this year that are exclusively over here at Primary Arms. But they've got scopes and sights and battery caps and red dots and magnifiers and more micro dots and RMR type. Uh, RMR is tricky, but uh, reflexive sights, some binoculars, and then they go into more detail about it, talking about all the detail there, the reticles. The I, I just really have enjoyed it. I got that on my 4570 government man. It's just not this one, but I've got the uh, Cyclops. I think it's on my 4570, and it is cool beans. I like it. It looks like this one here. It's not a micro, though. I guess it's this. Yeah, micro prism. It's like that one. But mine has a horseshoe. I guess the new one's got a more of a traditional scope. All right. Yeah, it's got more of a traditional scope with a drop compensating and then grid for wind and all that stuff. I don't know. Mill dot tack, mill tack reticles and all that stuff. If, uh, if I sound, uh, like I don't know what I'm doing, it's because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been fasting today and I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit tired. I'm really cold. So I got a little heater running in here. I hope we don't make a lot of noise, but go over, check out primary arms and let them know that you appreciate them supporting us and farm zero network as a whole. Also, we want to thank Farms Rail Network uh, for keeping our content out there. It was uh, I was uploading the last show and went to go upload, and the storage account was full. I quickly texted Sean. He goes, one second. And then a minute later, he <laughs> upgraded the storage, and so we had more storage to be able to upload our shows. And so uh, Sean is the president of FRN, if you guys didn't know. And so... He uh, put in more storage, and we were able to upload our show, and you guys were able to listen to it at your 
at your leisure and uh, watch it at your leisure. All that requires want to pay for all that storage, and that, that's what they do. We appreciate it. PatriotPatch.co. If you've not gotten some patches, there's something wrong with you, and you need to fix yourself, as Paul Markle would say. You need to go out and get some new patches and stickers and accoutrements and shirts and gun rugs and all kinds of cool beans. And I've got a brand new package. It was up there, and I was going to bring it down. <laughs> Still sitting up there. Uh, the latest patch it's a snowman with a with a gun and i forgot what it said on it now i apologize but i did post on our instagram and facebook maybe page the patch of the month is pretty cool if you're not checked it out yet but give uh, jake and the guys and gals over there at patrick patriot patch dots <laughs> some love we're the coffin much right here yeah, we my, are. Wife, my wife is uh, coughing her head off. Doug's struggling, so we're going to hand it over to Doug before his voice goes on us. What have you been up to the last few weeks here, Doug? Uh, let's see. On the God side, I've been doing uh, Sportsman's Daily Devotional. Uh, my, other, my other devotional book that I have, uh, I haven't done it every day. I've been trying to, but I don't get it every day. Um uh, let's see. What have I been doing, man? It seems like forever since we've, uh, it's been forever. It, it has been, um, let's see. I was, I was able on the last deer hunt I went before I was going to miss the last weekend of the season. So the week before, cause I was going duck hunting and, uh, the week before that I was able to get one last deer hunt in and I, I wound up taking two big old does. And uh, so I processed those and got them all processed up myself. And I posted a video the other day grinding, making hamburger. And I figured while I had the grinder out, I might as well go ahead and make some breakfast sausage out of a hog that I killed that I just cut up and put in the freezer. So I was a busy camper last weekend, putting up, putting up sausage and hamburger and all kind of good stuff. Um, let's see. I may, I've had, I've been to Arkansas twice since we talked last time, I guess. Uh, first time we went out there, man, we smashed the ducks. I think we killed 79 in three mornings. Yeah. So we did pretty good. I had a, you know, you had a good duck hunt when your arm is bruised all up <laughs> in here. Yeah. With a big old coat and stuff on. And I was still bruised from. Or you've been shooting a forty-five seventy. One of the other. <laughs> I did not shoot the forty-five seventy, but I was shooting three-inch magnums out of that out of that Benelli I got. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We we put the smack down on them. I did have a little accident on the last morning. I actually, I went to uh, get out of the blind. I had to step down on the boat deck. You know, from the blind, it was a little bit of a drop down, and I called myself holding the door. There wasn't much to hold on to, so I was holding on. And I stepped off onto the boat, and the boat, you know, rocked mm -hmm. and went down like they do. And about that time, Ella comes sailing out of the blind and landed on the deck as well. And that made it rock a little bit more. Well, with a pair of waders on, I couldn't stretch, but just so far. Yeah. And I was committed. And <laughs> off the deck that I came and landed on my bad knee mm. that I've been having so many fits about. I landed on that knee, but when I fell to catch myself from going over in the water, I grabbed the gunnel with one hand when I when I caught it, but this arm hit on the edge of the, the gunnel of the boat, and it hurt, but it mm -hmm. didn't hurt near as bad as my knee did. Well, my knee's better now, but my arm is not, so I don't know if you can see it on the camera right in there. Mm -hmm. but I, I'm pretty sure I either broke something or cracked it. Yeah. So it's just not getting no better. So again, here I am. I made another doctor's appointment to go see the doctor. I've been to the doctor more in the last month and a half than I probably have in the last eight years. Oh yeah. And it ain't fun. I don't like going. I don't no, like going to the doctor. I'm not a doctor kind of person. That's like we was talking earlier, you know. Me me and Wendy both, we right after Christmas, right well, right before Christmas, actually, before I went on the duck hunt, we both had the flu. So, 
but hey, I got the flu shot. That's what took my knee out. So, <laughs> right on time. Know, I'm I'm glad I took the shot. You know. So he's it, being it, sarcastic it was, for you new people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is your first time tuning in. Yeah, it was a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like me, like me, you were talking a while ago, Troy. It, it, get old ain't for wusses. I promise. It is you. not. It, it you got to be tough. When he's like, that arm's hurting that bad. Why don't you go to the doctor? I'm like, hey, it'll get better. It'll be all right. But it ain't all right. It We're going to become better. the old Crosby show talking about our ailments, our doctor visits, and our last bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> what What have you hurt this week, Troy? On well, today's show, we'll talk about what Troy hurt. Yeah. I've got some injuries, too. I, I mean, last, last show we did, I just stepped on a nail. You did. And, uh, yeah. We'll get into that. I my, actually, my turn. You know, I went to I went on the second duck hunt, and I actually invited you on this one, yeah, to see if you could go, but you couldn't because you you're yeah. like a you're like I was a waiting tired. for a follow up appointment with the doctor. <laughs> you're like a tired had a nail punch hole in it. And, That's right. Yeah, so you you were on the disabled list, so you and I was go. all deflated about it too. You were, <laughs> you were. I really wanted to go. I've been wanting to go for a long time, and. I was like, man, I got the time I can go. Well, I really didn't have the time, but I was going to take the time to go. I've been working on, well, I'll talk about it here in a minute. I think my second trip, the first day we were out, we had a good, we had a good time. I had a great, great day. The second day started out with us getting lectured um, by the guides or by the head, the guy that owns it. And uh, I was asked not to call anymore let the guides do it <laughs> you making him look bad <laughs> well it's funny you should say that so on the, on our first day i was calling and the guides went out i think we had three ducks on on the lantern maybe two we shot one the guide goes out both guides got out of the boat and are out in the boat and went out in the bay because it was it's like the, the one blind we were hunting was like 20 feet deep so you couldn't get out of the blind and I had, did not have Ella with me. She was in the hotel room because it, I thought they were bringing two dogs with them. So I didn't take her. So I'm in the blind. No big deal. We got like two ducks. They go pick the third one up. Well, they bring the boat around behind the blind. And before they could even get in the blind, we look up and see some ducks coming in. I hit them with a call and they turned. I finished them, put them in the hole. We killed them. We're like, hey, go get those ducks too while you're in the boat still already. So they took off, went out there, picked them up. They came around, was going to park the boat to get back in the blind before they could get in. I saw some more ducks. I <laughs> called them, put them in the hole. We killed them. So they go out, pick those up. They come back the third time. We did it one more time. And one of my buddies who may or may not be listen to the show right now <laughs> hey, he rick. Opens, he, hey rick he, he opens the back door he's like hey why don't you guys just stay in the in the boat we got this <laughs> and i think it might have ticked the, the guys off take them off a little bit <laughs> it did a little bit and so the next morning we get there and we had a great time well we called a few more ducks in and killed them too and uh, the next morning the guide starts out with telling me that he he doesn't want us to call anymore because we're a mixed group in the blind. So there was there was four guys from South Carolina hunting with five of us, and uh, I don't think they had a problem with me calling because, like I said, we had two ducks, uh -huh. three ducks, because they went to pick up the third one. We had three ducks, and the whole time the guys are in the, in the boat. You know, I'm calling and putting ducks in the hole and we're killing them. These guys are coming down high five and like, man, you put them right in the hole. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was them that had something to say about it. So, <laughs> so for the next two days, I was miserable. I didn't call. I, did I you take never, Ella with you? Huh? Did you take Ella with you? I did have Ella the last day with me. Yeah. And yeah, she was, she was there the first two days she didn't hunt. Um, Sean that I hunt with, uh, my partner in crime he, he had his dog and his son-in-law was with us and he had his dog and she's a young she's a young dog she's about a year and a half old or so and uh, he wanted her to get a little bit of time in 
Ella's like me. She's old. She was just happy laying on the bed in the hotel, chilling out, eating Cheetos, and whatever <laughs> anybody would feed her. She was she was happy. But uh, yeah, I didn't get to I didn't get to do much. And for me to not call, that's half the fun for me. Uh, you know, I, don't, I mean, I like to kill ducks. Don't get me wrong, but I like to call ducks. I like to watch them work and listen mm-hmm. to what I'm calling and see them react and come in the hole. And I, I like watching the guy, the other guys shoot them. Now I will shoot them, mm-hmm. but I like watching them shoot them. That's what I enjoy. Then for two days, I couldn't do that. And I was miserable. And I, was like, I would say, hey. wait a second, who's paying who here? Well, I, I know, say, right? I'm like, if I'm paying you, I ain't going to blow my horn if I want to. <laughs> right. Because you booked yeah. us up with somebody else. It's not my fault. <laughs> right. So, I. They didn't have any dogs. They just went out with a boat and cut, went and go. Oh no, they had a dog. Well, oh, okay. they they did have a dog. He sent it out the first time, and it went out and swam about ten feet and come back. And it's like I ain't going out there. You're done for the day. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, he was done. He was done with his swimming routine. Um, but we hunted with him the next day. And he didn't bring his dog the next day, and I should have brought. Oh. I should have brought Ella. I should have brought Ella the first day. She'd have been fine. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is what it is. But. Um, it was fun. Hey, I, I have been contacting congressman offices this week. Good deal. <clears throat> so I got a funny story on that. So I voted for our congressman, Austin Scott. So I called his office and I'm talking to the girl. She's like, give me your address. I'll get you registered here and send your comment up to the congressman. I'm like, okay, here my address. She goes, oh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're, you're not in Congressman Scott's area anymore. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> Gerrymandering, huh? <laughs> yeah. She said, well, they did a rezoning and you now fall under uh, Congressman Bishop's district. I was like, mm. she said, I can give you his number. I said, wait, I said, Bishop's a Democrat, right? She's like, yeah. I said, why would I want to call him about a gun problem in the ATF? I said, he ain't going to listen. I said, can I just vent to to Austin's office and you. The one I voted for. (laughs) Yeah. And she's like, no, we can't, we're not, we we can't do that. Uh, Really? What the heck? So I said, well, can you leave him a message for me? And she's like, sure. So I vented to her anyway. And then I called Sanford Bishop's office and I, I left him a good one too. And she gave me his Washington office number and I called and they're lucky it was busy when I called because <laughs> light them up. Yeah. She's like, well, he's, you know, he's, he's here to help Republicans and Democrats. I'm like, yeah, sure. He is. <laughs> Whatever. The Democrats vote lockstep. Boy, they don't step out except for what's a mansion. <laughs> yeah, my- well, good dude up in West Virginia is about the only one <laughs> mansion. Yeah. Now I'm in a Democrat zone, so now I'm going to have to sell my house and move. Yeah, if you'd known that, you wouldn't even move, dude. No. Property value's already gone down. I, I kind of like this house. And now well, you, might have to run for, you might have to run for that position. Take him well, <laughs> you know, that has been talked about. So that is not out of the question so far. But let's see. But then you'd have, to go, you'd have to go to D.C. And then, so then there'd be that. <laughs> well, it would be that. But congressman can carry a gun in D.C., right? I don't know. I think some of them say they are. I don't know if they actually are or not. But I think it would be a little big hassle, but it would make sense that you could protect yourself. Uh, yeah, since the police ain't going to do it. Especially in District of Criminals, I mean, Columbia. <laughs> you right there. Uh, either way. It's almost, it's hog season. Deer season's out down here now. Hog season's back in, so a pork ellipse is soon to be coming again. So, Oh, man, I want to kill some hogs bad. I know. I have not, I got that first taste, and I ain't got it back. I need, <laughs> yeah, you need to come down and do it. I've got the thermal rifle sitting by the bed. I've been trying to catch some coyotes. But the time I hear them get out there... <laughs> They're gone, and when I go out there and sit, I don't ever hear them. Mm-hmm. And I go to stalk them, and it, uh, where the where they're mostly at is usually downwind of me. So I don't have permission to go in my neighbors and come in the back way. 
on that side. And so I'm going to have to get up and blind up at some height and just sit out there. I don't sit there waiting. All I've been doing is on ground blind. You got there and call them in. I had to, uh, I had to go get my concealed carry permit renewed. It expired on December the 22nd, and I didn't realize that. Mm. And I was talking to somebody about permits, about concealed carry permits versus, you know, Georgia's constitutional carry now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, uh, I need to look at mine. I pulled it out. I was like, oh, and this, this is January. I was like, uh-oh. So I went on, went on You're the making county. me wonder now. Look at my. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I went on the county site, and they're like, as long as you renew within 90 days before expiration or within 30 days after the expiration, you're good. And you can just do it for a renewal. 2025. I, like, I got some time. You got a little bit. So I took off. Well, I, I went online. The last time I renewed it, I just went online and did it online in the county I was living in. Well, the county I live in now, apparently they ain't heard of the internet much. And they sure don't know how to do stuff online, apparently. Hmm. Because they will not let you do it online. You have to go to the courthouse. And it was all only thing I didn't have to do was get my fingerprints, but it was basically the same thing as if I was getting a brand new one. Hmm. But they only charged me 30 bucks. So I, I'm yeah. like, whatever. I'm like, how many days is it going to take to get it back? She goes, Ooh, probably about a month or so. I'm like, what? Really? She said, she said, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't go real fast here. I'm like, oh, okay. But she gave Ours, me a temp, she gave me a temporary one. So, Ours, you, you can take a picture and submit your day of anything, the address, anything change. You got to change that. But you, you're supposed to, if anything changes with your address, you're supposed to have, do it within less than 10 days, I think. Because they do a background check like every month on you with the Kentucky. So oh, really? you don't, yeah. So you don't have to have. You know, in Kentucky, you don't have to have the NICS check because they're, if you got the concealed carry, you're good to go. If you, if you don't pass a monthly check or whatever, the FBI background check or whatever, they run that like once a month on you as a, as a Kentucky concealed carry holder. And so they'll call you up and say, hey, you got to turn your license in if you don't pass that or you, or some reason. But uh, as long as you, as long as you have a Kentucky seal license, you just they just put that number in. You don't have to have a background check and all that stuff. Right. It didn't ever go through the ATF. Was that got you? That's got me. Well, uh, let's see. We have been sick. Uh, I had the crud right before the last show, I think. <coughs> I might still have a cough. I still got a little bit of cough, and I think it's just all this weather changing. I mean, we were 65 yesterday morning and we were 30 last night and, and the wind's blowing. It's just, it's just up and down, warm and cold, uh, rainy and then dry. It's just, almost like it. so we all got a, a cough. All my kids got whatever I had. And well, Chris and Daphne had the COVID. And so she was out from work for a week and a half uh, at the end of Christmas, right after Christmas, which really upset her. You know, she really wanted to go to work uh, from Christmas all the way through New Year <laughs> and just had to take off that time. <laughs> Be home. But she wasn't feeling good. So it was, a, it was not a good thing. But she was happy not because she had to work like, I think like 70 hours a week for a month and a half before Christmas, you know how it is when you work in uh, Amazon. Well, I don't know if you know how it is, but they they were working a lot, sixty to seventy hours a week, uh, mandatory overtime, and uh, so I think that's what wore down more than anything, just not being able to get enough rest. She but she rolling she, in the money. Yeah, she got all healed up. Yeah, she said she didn't miss that uh, triple time on uh, New Year's Eve. She was looking forward to that, but. Uh, she uh, got all healed up, and then Audrey had it, and then then we thought we were in the clear. Then Krista got uh, got it Christmas Eve, no day before Christmas Eve, twenty third. She started coughing, and she is still coughing. She's been coughing almost a month now. She cracked a rib because she's coughed so much, 
and she has been on all the inhalers. It's just like the year before when when she got COVID. Uh, she just couldn't kick that cough, and so she went back to the doctor again today, and they said she's got pneumonia, uh, but they said it wasn't bad. They gave her some different medicine and told her to get up, move around, and cough a lot, and not to take the cough medicine except for nighttime because she needs to cough up whatever's down the left in the bottom. But she's a miserable, uh, feels miserable, just wore out, just tired from coughing, just, you know, yeah, you, know, you get when you can't get over something for a long time, it just wears you down. That's sort of where she's at. My foot healed up good. Uh, the doctor said it looked great. Uh, that was when you're all out slamming ducks this, the <laughs> second time. He gave me the all clear and said, uh, I could use it, just don't abuse it. He told me not to walk too much on it until it completely went away. And uh, But he said it healed up good. And then we were talking about ailments before the show. I'm laid back here because I got my foot propped up because... <laughs> <laughs> I woke up this morning and my foot looked a little, my ankle looked strange. It was sort of sticking out the side there and like, that don't look right. And I don't remember doing anything to it, but it just sort of like it was, when I, used to, when I played football, I would roll my ankles a lot, uh, get double teamed or something going around at the end and hit two guys and stuff and my ankles would roll. It sort of had that look to it, like it had been twisted, but I don't remember twisting my foot and it was, and my foot was sort of turned in a little bit. I'm like, that's just not right. It didn't hurt. but uh, So I moved it around. It was stiff. Of course, you know, I'm getting old. I got arthritis in my, in my feet, ankles, and hands. Uh, just abusing my body all my life. Uh, and this hand, the week before, I'd went to the chiropractor. And he said, oh, he, my finger would keep sticking. It come down and stick. I couldn't get to straight. You know, I had to pull it back out. Like, Something's wrong there. And he said, oh, you got trigger finger uh, or lock. He said trigger lock finger. I think that's what he called it. And he reached and grabbed a hole in that middle finger and he pulled and twisted at the same time and popped it. And you could hear it crack across the whole office. And then this hand over here was all stove up and couldn't, the side of my finger and hand was all stove up. And he twisted, popped that loose. And then my thumb was all, I didn't realize how bad my thumb was locked up. He popped that back in place. And my elbows, both my elbows was out. And he popped them in. The elbows, I think, hurt worse than anything getting adjusted. I think elbows are the worst. Uh, I just, I know what's coming. And you just have to relax and let it happen. And it's just sort of, <laughs> it's sort of like, you know it's going to hurt. And you just have to sit back and let it happen. But, uh, but that was last week. And so this hand is, I got free movement in it. He said, you know, this arthritis sitting up in it. You just got to keep moving it and keeping it from freezing up and stuff. And then that he, he got that foot today and he said, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, your arches are, are starting to fall. I've been flat foot since birth. But uh, he said, your arches are starting to fall. He said, you need to get you some custom made orthotics. I said, well, I had some. I wore them out like five years ago. <laughs> And with the, you know, my feet hadn't been a problem. They hadn't bothered me. And uh, he said, "No, you you gotta go get some and and uh, fix them." But it it it, it twisted in. And it sort of locked up. And so he grabbed grabbed a hold of it and twisted it and popped it and and grabbed all the heel and popped it out. And he got my foot looking normal again. By the time he got done with it, it took him a couple of minutes. But he got all the bones moved back where they needed to go, and uh, I can walk on again. It's it's a little sore right now, but Tell me to keep it elevated. So I'm trying to keep it up on top of a box here under the table. It's hard to sit upright and do that at the same time. So if you see me leaning back, it's not because I'm about to fall asleep, which, well, it could be because I'm falling asleep, but more than likely it's because I'm trying to keep my foot up. But that's all the medical stuff, <laughs> the God stuff, reading the Bible, uh, watching, uh, let's see, we were watching it during uh, when everybody was sick. We stayed at home and didn't uh, go spread it at church or anything. Uh, but we've been back to church two, three weeks now and got men's prayer breakfast coming up tomorrow. You gotta come up and join us. Dude. It's tomorrow. just a seven hour trip. You can make it yeah. leave right after the show. You can be here. I can be there. <laughs> well, men's prayer breakfast at uh, South Fork tomorrow. It's actually an associational one. So 
all the other churches in our association, Lynn Baptist Association. Lynn, yeah, Lynn Baptist it's gonna association. be the big one. Yep. So they'll all be there. There'll be lots of gravy and biscuits and uh, and eggs and bacon and sausage and stuff all over the place. I'm sure. And uh, lots of good conversation. Used to enjoy those, uh, especially. Uh, Oh, my granddad was going with us. We'd oh, yeah. All go. Enjoy the time getting together and praying and talking sit about some, what's going on. Sit somewhere close to Mickey Sutherland so you could uh, <clears throat> laugh the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, Mickey's up in e town now. He's half fluting. He's a, he don't associate with us riff raff flu camp people. He's a hard guy, <laughs> man. Now. Is he? Yeah, I haven't talked to Mickey in a long time. <coughs> I saw uh, Marty and uh, Tim at uh, at South Fork's homecoming, oh, the nice. 240th celebration. Uh, they were both there, and uh, got to talk to them a little bit. Well, I didn't get to talk to Tim because I didn't know it was Tim. I didn't recognize him. He looked so different. You know, he got old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marty. Well, yeah. Why he started shaving his head a couple I don't know, a decade ago, I guess. Oh, uh, longer than that, probably. Yeah, but uh, Tim, he got old. I, I didn't, I didn't recognize him. I was like, that's an old man over there. <laughs> Dude, I got, I got an invite from some of my classmates um, the other day to join a Facebook group for our fortieth reunion this year. I like, man, I ain't been out of school forty years. I got the like. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I did. <laughs> I'm right behind you. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, I've never been to a, a high school reunion. Me neither. Not one, not one of them. I just like, and, you know, because the first 10 years, they're just stupid. And then the 10 years after that, they're still stupid. But then the, <laughs> I thought about going to the 30th one. But no, I, I didn't think they were quite there. I, I'm not that I'm saying my, my people that I went to school were stupid. I'm just saying that they sort of do things that I don't do. And uh, I figure by this next one, there'll probably be enough grandparents in the crowd that maybe it won't be a problem. <laughs> have something to talk about. <laughs> maybe we'll have something in common. Uh, I'd say, but I know that I've seen pictures of the first decade or two decades of it i'm like nah i'm not missing nothing there <laughs> i just wait till they till they mature a little bit more and then i might go uh not, i don't know high school wasn't a highlight of my life I, it was the, you know i had other things that uh, i found more interesting I, I was really a loner you know i was one of those i had a few friends like you guys at church but that was about it I was going to say, you hung out with me. Yeah, I could keep up with you on the coon dogs. But... <laughs> we got some stories there, too, man. I do miss going to the Pizza Hut after Wednesday night, hanging out, and listening to jukebox, and getting pizzas and, and pictures of drinks, and hanging out and talking. Oh, yeah. That was always fun. They don't let you go in the Pizza Hut no more. You can't go in the Pizza Hut? No, it's all takeout. It looks That's the, the same. It yeah, I'm like, man, I like going there and play the old. I'm sure the jukebox is long gone. I haven't been there. I probably hadn't been to Old Pizza in 15, 20 years. Uh, but uh, we still order every once in a while and pick it up. But uh, uh, we're getting rambling on stuff people don't really care about. We can talk about this stuff on the show. <laughs> Let's see. EDC, I did pick up a new Pistola. It's never even been out of the box yet because I've just been oh, hammered yeah. with taxes and. I got to get it out and throw some rounds through it. And I've ordered a holster, but it hadn't shown up yet. So uh, I, I was in a store. What in the world is going on here? I got all of a sudden mail started popping up all over my window. I couldn't see nothing. Um, I was in, I was going to the ham meeting down in Glasgow. And I got there early because I went. I actually went and got my tires rotated on my truck earlier. And still had like an hour left over before it's time for the ham uh, luncheon, which is not, we weren't eating ham, it's ham radio. 
club in Glasgow gets together every Tuesday and we go to this Mexican restaurant and eat together and talk about stuff and show each other radios and all that stuff. But so I was there like an hour early. There's this new gun store down when new, it's like two or three years old, uh, down the street from not very far. So I drove down there just to burn some time off, got walking around and you were talking about your 365 and uh, they had one there on sale. And then they had uh, the, I guess it's one like yours, a little concealable one without that. It's sort of like a, didn't that, it was like a deep pocket carry kind of a gun. Mm-hmm. And then they had the other one. And I was like, I, I felt those when I first, when they first came out, the first original version, but this one, I, I put my hand on it. Like, man, that feels good in the hand. I'm like, that's 2. just 0. like, yeah, it's just like natural. It just like fit in my hand, which most small nine, especially just SIGs, SIG pistols, I, I love the look. I love the thought of them. I love the craftsmanship. It's just like, but they don't fit my hand. It's just that European palm swell thing that they got going on, like the 220s and stuff. Yeah. I always wanted a 220 and 10 millimeter. Never fit my hand. Uncomfortable. The sliding line was wrong. I grabbed all that thing and held it up. It was perfect. Hand, the, the hand grip was perfect. The side alignment was perfect. It was light. It felt like it weighed half as much as my glo- as my shadow systems. Of course, mm-hmm. it's got didn't have any rounds in it, but it it just like man, that would be a nice concealable pocket gun. And uh, they told me that all they had they had special in that one. And it came with three magazines and a carrying case and lock and all the back straps for it to change out the back straps. And it had the plate where you could put your RMR uh, or whatever on it. I'm like. Man. And so I walked off and said, ah, I don't need it. <laughs> I, I went around, looked at a few other things, come back, and like, they feel that again. I put it back. Yeah, I'm going to take it. <laughs> I hadn't bought any guns since uh, the lever action back in, what was that, September, October, somewhere in that mm-hmm. uh, Like, I was, I was saving for something expensive, but uh, I broke down and did that. Yeah, for your uh, truck. Yeah. Actually, the diesel I paid three eighty nine for it today. Really? Today. And that was it. That was regular price. I get ten percent. I get ten cents off a gallon uh, racetrack, and uh, I paid three eighty nine a gallon for it. Which it's been dropping up there now. Other places like close to here, it's like four thirty, four thirty nine a gallon. Closer to you know, like here in Magnolia. But there at E Town right there on the airstate, it was three ninety nine. So it was three ninety five last week, three you know, three ninety nine the week before that, and it was like four and four oh nine the week before that. It's been dropping like ten cents a week. So let's see. EDC I'm carrying the shadow systems, XR nine twenty, got crimson trace, red dot on it, and a super tuck deluxe. And Oh, I missed the ham stuff. Uh, farm stuff. I've been <laughs> I've been feeding the cows uh, hay uh, a lot because there's just not any pasture. It's been so cold and and uh, just there's not enough grass growing this time of year. It grows, you know, in spurts, but it just they've uh, they're eating roll hay uh, most of the time, and uh, and then when it gets really cold. Uh, or windy or something the weather's really bad uh i'll throw them down some square bale hay which is higher quality hay than the roll hay the roll hay is pasture hay stuff i cut and rolled up out of the pastures and stuff mm-hmm. square bale hay is got higher protein uh grasses in it things like that and then i spent some mineral supplements and stuff in the trough with them and give them some salt blocks and stuff and they're looking good good and slick uh, batting it up really good. Let's see what else. I haven't been doing a lot of ham radio. I've I've done a lot of uh, D Star. I've been on a lot of the D Star nets uh, lo- lately. Uh, Larry's got me on this sending pictures on D Star. Uh, so D Star picture nets on. Which one is that on? I can't remember. It's like reflector. I think it's 55 uh charlie maybe i have to go back and look but they on uh, wednesday nights you send pictures 
you know, they have like you check in and then they ask you if you have any pictures you want to send. You can send your pictures digitally through the radio waves and everybody else that's on the net can get your picture. It downloads through the air. And uh, yeah, you can receive pictures on your 5100 or whatever. Now, your 5100, it's a, it's a monochrome though. It's not color, is it? Right. It's not yeah. color. Yeah. I don't know if you get grayscale or whatever, but you can sit. What you do is you send them through your phone. So it won't show up on your display, but it'll show up on your uh, phone. So you have a phone app that connects Bluetooth to your radio. And you can send the picture from your phone to your radio. Your radio sends it from radio to the ether, wherever the repeaters, whatever, and that. And then everybody on the other end that's receiving the, the signal can get the picture. So I use the ID uh, 52 uh, HT, and then it's linked with uh, with an app on my phone. So any pictures on my phone, I can send them, and they're not high resolution, but they're you know you can make them out. They're they're good pictures. I mean, we would have been happy to have them ten years ago. You know, I think they're you know 360, but something fun to piddle around with. Yeah, it's something interesting to do. But uh, yeah, just another one of the ham radio avenues there's all kinds of things you can do with ham radio i'm studying for my extra again i got back into studying it this week so i've been taking the test of each section until i get 100 uh three or four times on each section test and uh i'm halfway through i'm averaging between 80 and 100 on all the tests so i feel pretty confident so i don't know if i'll be confident enough to take it this coming club meeting uh we got a club meeting next thursday uh, if I'm confident enough, I might try to take it then. And if not, I'll probably take it at Hamcation and down in Orlando. When I'm down there in, in February. So yeah, we we got a um, uh, what is it field day coming up, and I'm I'm gonna try to take my general and get it knocked out. Yeah, yeah. It, it's last time I took it, it was not long after mom, dad, and. My mind was scatterbrained, and I was was dealing with all that stuff, setting up the estate, paying all their bills, and taking care of all their affairs. And it was just uh, my, my head wasn't in it. I, I bombed it badly, so I just backed off of it until I'm. <coughs> we're almost done with the estate stuff. Uh, I got a lot of things off the plate right now. I'm working on a lot of taxes for the first quarter. I got my payment out, worked on uh, 1099s for the employees and stuff, and got those knocked out. And so now I'm just trying to get all the personal taxes done. So every, the way it's set up, it all runs through my, all these S corps and, and trust everything run through my own personal taxes. So all that stuff has got to be, segregated out and put in its individual things it's just a lot of i need an accountant just to take care of my day-to-day -day stuff it's just a mess mm -hmm. uh, well that's enough of that what have you been what are you packing tonight oh i got the i got the little sig the little little shorty version of uh your new one but i'm Cute. probably losing this one my wife uh when i was in arkansas i, I had my glock with me and she was she had this one in the house and when i got home it was she she wanted a revolver and that's what she'd been carrying a little 38 mm -hmm. that's what she wanted oh it was laying on my nightstand and my sig was gone i was like oh, <laughs> this, this ain't good and then she comes home she goes i really like that gun i might have to get one i said oh well if we're gonna do that i might just let you have that one since you can put it in your purse i'll get me the new one with the RMR cut on it and put me a little optic on it and which I should have went that route to start with, but so we'll see, there may be another one. It may be getting a new brother or sister. <laughs> They're not badly priced. I mean, they seemed really reasonable. They weren't the one I bought. It was less than the cost of a new Glock. So, well, this, this one is the small, it's not the 2.0. So on it, um, I got this one for three seventy five, and I didn't know it at the time because he didn't have one. But I sent a buddy of mine down there; he was going to get one of them, and he was going to get it 
I think they were running them for three ninety nine. But where I get them, I get they they always do me right. And uh, he got the one with the R, same one with the RMR cut for three ninety nine. I was like, wait, what? Wow. So now I got to go get me. Now I got to get me one. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It was uh, I checked the price the day I bought it. I looked at uh, Kentucky Gun Company. And it was the same price, so I thought, well, I'll go and get this local guy here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I got a good deal as you did. But well, you got the two point, you got the two point oh with three mags, so yeah. you did all right. Yep. Yeah. All right, you guys, a joke. Man, where are we got us? I do got us. Fifty minutes of the show talking about our, our aches and ailments. <laughs> So, uh, a fourth grader celebrated his birthday on crutches, so he couldn't carry the cupcakes into the school without help. His mom asked her sixth grader Noah to help her brother to help his brother carry them carry them in. He said, "Well, I could, but I'd prefer not to." Spotting a teaching moment, she she asked Noah, "What would Jesus do?" Noah answered. Jesus would heal him and he could carry in his own cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> he could do it himself. Stay in there and walk. Carry him cupcakes. That's right. This day in history. <laughs> this day in history. January 20th, 1981. Minutes after Ronald Reagan's inauguration as the 40th president of the United States. The 52 U.S. captives held at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, Iran, are released, ending the 444-day Iran hostage crisis. I thought that was kind of kind of cool. I remember that when it happened. I like mm -hmm. they are afraid of him because as soon as he got as soon as he got elected, man, they was making deals. <laughs> uh, like. I remember Saddam Hussein standing in front of those kids that they had hostage back in oh, the day. Yeah. You remember that? Oh, yeah. And like human shields. That's the way tyrants are. They always stand behind innocent people. Mm, that's right. Bible verse today. Let me see if I can grab it and pull it on here. Presente. Screen A, Chrome A, James A. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I can tell you, it sounds simple, but it isn't always simple in practice. You ever experienced that, Doug? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You can barely make that out. I need to make that smaller or something. I'm not doing something right here. <laughs> but um, I know that if you don't hate your sin as much as God hates your sin, uh, you will have a hard time getting rid of your sin. I've experienced that in my life where God convicts you of a sin. And you sort of say, I'm sorry. And then you go right back and get back into it again. Mm. It's, it's like, you know, hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> you're like man I, I can't help myself I just I go back again but until you realize that God abhors sin he cannot stand it at all he does not want you to be committing any sin until you understand that it separates you from God and it takes you out of his grace and will uh, when you recognize that it is destroying your soul, <laughs> that it is endangering your ability to be able to uh, have a relationship with God because he, he can't be a part of sin. He is holy and we are not. And when we commit that sin and, and don't hate it, it, it will keep on allowing the devil to use that sin to manipulate you, to to accuse you of that sin, it will cause you to continually fall into the traps of sin if you don't recognize that 
the devil has a plan and it's not for your good it's for your <laughs> demise uh once you realize that uh you have to flee from the you know the devil has to flee from you when you you know when you confront him and but that power only comes if you are right with god the power is not yours it's god's power I mean, you don't command anybody on your power to do anything. Mm -hmm. But if you have a relationship with God and that relationship is is that you're staying, confessing sin, you're seeking out uh, the sin in your life and, and confessing it, getting it out of your life, and you're trying to walk with the Lord, you're trying to stay in the word so that you know what sin is, so you know how you should live and how you should act, then when the devil attacks and that's when the devil will attack when you're doing the right thing when as long as you're uh, committing the same sins he's gonna let you get about with it it's only because god loves you and he chastises you or causes you to be caught in your sin that that, that you ever get caught it's not the devil catching your sin it's god because the devil will be happy with you just keep on sinning and keep on being uh, a bad representation of a christian right but as soon as you start trying to do the right thing, that's when you're going to come under attack. But you got to remember that God promises us. We, you know, confront the devil. He's got to flee because greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. So mm -hmm. that's my courage for tonight. Not a long verse, but just a reminder that, you know, we're in a very sinful world right now. We're in a very fallen world. I mean, my email account is flooded with all kinds of junk emails that i don't know where it just started coming i i thought i got rid of all that stuff back in the 90s and all of a sudden my email account is loaded up with porn stuff and all kinds of disgusting stuff i've got all these filters turned on but it's like somebody turned all the filters off and all this stuff started coming in and i just been blocking and blocking and blocking and blocking and sending stuff to the junk folders you're a computer guy i don't know why is it not you know, it's like the same stuff over and over again. How, how come it doesn't pick, pick it up and throw it in the trash can? I don't understand. It because the, the algorithms they don't want you to get rid of it. They want they want it to be there for you. Yeah, but I just like you know I don't even, I don't even open or preview the windows. I just you know, I see the words and stuff. I just automatically block that sender and send it to the junk. But you think it would learn and. I don't think that the program would learn the, the junk because it's the same websites over and over again that I've blocked and the same email addresses I blocked. They're still coming through. Right. Well, it was all the Bible verses and uh, that stuff. We're going to talk about this uh, new all of a sudden reversal after 10 years of saying it was okay. Now they're going to make you a felon if you don't uh, apply for a form one and take pictures of your gun and and send all that stuff to the ATF. We will yeah. talk about that. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think that uh, the ATF is a bureaucracy and they can't make laws. So I think about it. What the practicality of what reality is is a whole nother matter because you know, if you want to be completely honest about it, your Congress people. I mean, with the exception of you know some liberty minded Congress people. They want to take your guns away, too. Sure they do. But they know they won't stay in office long if they start voting for this stuff. So they are more than happy to let a bureaucracy uh, take your rights away, which, again, they can't because it's an inalienable right. So they chip away and chip away and chip away and find every little nook and cranny they can stick things in. I was watching a video. I, I posted it up on the up online. I think uh, – I posted on Guy Guns a page. Nobody's seen it. Uh, oh, they no. blo they blocked all the videos I, I posted up there. They blocked all the videos on, on the other thing. But it explains how did short barrel rifles become a NFA item? Well, originally back in the 30s, they were having trouble with these gangsters coming and robbing, and they were robbing with pistols and machine guns. And so they banned in that, or they tried to ban in that uh, NFA Act, which they really didn't ban. They just made them 
cost prohibitive. So back when uh, you could buy a, a handgun for ten dollars, they had two hundred dollar tax stamp, right? So that you really couldn't afford it. You know, it was it was, it was exorbitant amount of taxes to keep the criminal element. I guess they were thinking from being able to afford this this pistol. Well, they originally banned the pistols and machine guns, and they thought, well, if we don't ban uh, rifles and shotguns that are short barrel, then they could make those into concealable guns and use those. So the original thought of the NFA was they were going to stop criminals from robbing places with pistols and machine guns. So those were the two primary things. Mm-hmm. The secondary things were, well, was the pistol. And so anything with a brace, uh, they said, so if you modify and make the brace, uh, or the stock shorter and the overall length shorter, then that's considered a short barrel rifle uh, because that would be concealable. They could put that under the trench coat and they could rob with it. And so that was why they inv- enacted the short barrel shotgun and the short barrel uh, rifle as NFA items. Well, when it went to the Congress to work it out they said you can't ban pistols pistols have been around and everybody has pistols you can't ban pistols well they pulled the pistols out but they left the short barrel rifle and shotgun in there they didn't take it out mm-hmm. and because their ultimate goal was to get rid of pistols so really the short barrel rifle isn't even a thing i mean it, it's pretty much they just didn't remove that from the language when they should have and so that's uh, yeah, I, I see, Jim. Uh, they, yeah. they're they're blocking everything. I mean, I posted up videos. We're going to take a sidebar. Here. They, I posted up. Uh, I mean, I've been commenting on stuff, and as soon as I get more than two likes on something, they remove my comment on all kinds of posts. And it's not just Facebook. It's on uh, LinkedIn. It's on uh, oh, what's the other thing? I get on Instagram. But Instagram, yeah. So I, I get people will make a snarky comment and I reply to it, not in a snarky way, just in an intelligent way. And man, people start lighting it up. I see like pop up, pop up. All these likes start popping up on my reply to them, and they'll take my comment and completely remove it. Oh yeah, you can't, you can't find it. It'll show four comments underneath the thing, but you click <laughs> on it, there's only one. They remove all the ones they don't like. I'm mm-hmm. like. You guys are pathetic. You can't stand if you can't if you can't have free speech. You know, you're, you're not a man. You're a wimp. You gotta take away people's free speech. That's another sidebar. That's another thing. Back to the ATF rule. So, but the original intent of the short barrel rifle, short barrel shotgun was to prevent these gangsters from coming in and robbing places with concealable arms and machine guns, uh, which they can't by law ban. They can't even ban machine guns. So they use the, the power of tax, the federal government did, use their power to tax to make it prohibitive from people to be able to possess machine guns. Well, that's unconstitutional. It needs to be fought. It's gone on long enough. And they they this short barrel rifle, short barrel shotgun is, is, is an and, and the suppressors are ridiculous because suppressors back in the day cost like three to five, three to seven dollars or something back in the thirties when they were selling them. Now, you know, it costs you $800 plus a $200 tax stamp plus a year waiting around for the government to say that you're not a criminal. Right. When, which is ridiculous because we, we wouldn't, you know, the NICS system can do it in so many seconds. Why can't, why can't the NF, why can't the ATF? Because they're trying to make it onerous, right? They're trying to make it difficult. They're trying to, to drag out and keep you from getting your rights. So anytime you give government ability to take something without a fight, uh, then they're going to do it, and they'll use any power that they have in their in their arsenal, and they'll even go to. I mean, we had them looking at trying to bring in uh, uh, laws from the uh, oh, what's UN, UN laws about gun control, about importation, and, and there's a lot of importation. A lot of things are blocked from being able to be imported in the United States because of UN rules and stuff. Oh, yeah. And a lot of guns from the United States can't be exported because of UN rules and stuff. Because, you know, people are stupid and they want one world government because they don't know how to read the Bible. But uh, 
but this ATF rule, it, it's a rule. It's not, it's not law. And to treat as law is not correct. But, you know, you're looking at, do I want a $250,000 fine and 10 years in prison to have a piece of rubber on the end of a buffer tube? Is it worth it? No, not really. It's it's, And so who gave them the right to do that? We do. Because our congressmen are wanting the same thing, most of them. Uh, I don't know what most of them. I, I'd say a lot of them would be happy to disarm us, and then they could tell us whatever they want. They could stay in office forever, and they have ultimate power. That is the that is the crux. To, that's the whole reason for the Second Amendment, is that you don't have a, a people who are unaccountable that can just rule over you. And when you see them going after that tool, you know that they are intending to make us slaves of the state. They're slavers. So, what you been doing, Doug? You been calling people? But, oh yeah, I've been I've been calling congressmen, <laughs> and uh, not that it's going to help. But I asked uh, I asked them. I said, "Am I the only person that's called about this?" They're like, "No, our phone's been lighting up about it." I was like, "Good." You know the the, the problem that we have is that they've they pretty much have stolen the, our election system. So they don't really have much fear of us anymore because they can elect whoever they want to. They can steal it or they can do whatever they want. Can no, nothing happens to them. They get away with it. Nobody's going to jail or prison. They just pick who they want to. So they really don't have to listen to us anymore. So the only teeth that we have left is the Second Amendment. And if we let that go, we'll be like every other country in the world disp- uh, underneath a bunch of despots and tyrants. Okay. Well, here's my que- here's my question. So, according to this ruling, once it was published, which it came out, mm-hmm. I thought it was odd that it came out on Friday the thirteenth, uh-huh. right before Shot Show <clears throat> kicked off. But, yep. I mean, it was perfect time. So, what are they doing? They're they're getting everybody at Shot Show talking about this stupid rule that they're that they're fixing to try to enforce. But you know, they from the time they publish that, you have a hundred and twenty days to either take it apart and take it take it off get rid of it destroy it whatever or you can turn your weapon into the atf or destroy (laughs) your weapon which uh, why would you do that that's stupid and then thirdly you can apply for your tax stamp for it to turn it into an sbr for free for free so uh-huh. one, I don't think it's constitutional because only Congress can deem for taxes, taxation, yeah, not the ATF. So right. if they can't impose a tax on you through the ATF, how can they impose not to tax you? How can they waive a tax? Yeah, how are they going to waive a tax? And if they can waive a tax, why can't they waive a tax on the other items? Right, exactly. And then this, the other part of that is, is that the the way that you do that is you have to apply for this uh, as a SBR. Well, if it's already assembled, you take a picture of this thing, and they're considering an SBR, and you know they're not going to get you a reply back for at least a year, especially if forty million people were to apply for this form one. Well, I just did you, some you, quick math. You would be a felon. You'd be a felon before they ever approve it. And they would be able to prosecute you because you send them pictures of something that they now consider uh, an FA item, and your fingerprints, and your communication that you're applying for this. Because on number uh, on a form one, you have to have all the parts disassembled. You can't assemble it until after it's approved, and they say, okay, now you can put the stock and the upper, you can put the upper and the lower together. Now you can own an SBR. But you can't do that until it's approved. So if you assemble this thing, or you've got to assemble, and you take a picture, submit, you're confessing to a crime that they will prosecute you for. According which is, to which is some of the guys, that, it's already assembled because you yeah. bought it like that. Most yeah. people, yeah, it came. They didn't add it on. They bought it from a, a gun dealer with the SBR, or SBR, with the. Uh, SB tactical arm brace or whatever brace you've got on it. Yeah. Because they said it was legal and it was perfectly fine. And now they want to make it not legal. So 
I did some quick. So there's roughly what 40 million of these braces out there. The, yeah, the guesstimates between 10 to 40 million. That's a big swing. But you know, anybody well, can go out and buy a brace and stick it on a pistol buffer tube. Yeah. And, so and you're done. So let's just go with 40 million. So at 40 million, if everybody submitted their form one to get their stamp for this, so they don't become felons, the ATF in the 120 days would have to process 333,333 a day, a day for the next 120 days. Yeah. So you don't become a felon. Well, I bought some suppressors in September and the guy said, you're looking at another four months. So we're talking about nine months for a suppressor. Uh, they're not going to get 120 days, 40 million people processed. And, you know, and the thing is, not, not unless you're really naive or, or not understanding what the trap is they're setting here for you, will people do this anyway? They're just going to take the braces off and be done just have a buffer tube and end up you know maybe making an sbr out of it later but they're not gonna fall for this or hopefully they're not gonna fall for this trap because you know once they start registering your guns and you know, they're going to register more guns which again is against the law the whole nfa registry is against the constitution all this stuff's against the Constitution. It's just a matter of how much will we put up with is what they're, they, and they keep pushing. They keep pushing. I'm sure the lawsuits are stacking up right now, waiting to go. Yeah. I mean, they've been losing in court. I mean, the ATF has been losing in court like crazy oh, yeah. over all this stuff that they've been rule making and stuff. I mean, the bump stock ban was ruled unconstitutional. And, you know, the, everything that's coming up, they're losing. But, you know, don't keep them from trying to hurt a bunch of people. And it's just sad that your government is working against your, against you, trying to make legal law-abiding citizens that are committing no, uh, the, the act of putting that thing on there is not hurting anybody. And if anything, it's, you know, it's not having a stock on there or not having some way to brace that thing uh, is more of a safety threat and more, uh, of likely to cause problems than then put it on there and so it's not for our safety it's just because they want to either they want taxes which if they're saying they're not going to tax us then they want to control us they want to find out who's got what and either it's way a, it's another business and they need to stay out. registry That's there are laws against robbing people there's laws against killing people there's laws against shooting people you don't need a law to to determine what kind of gun you can have. That's not any of their business. Mm-mm. I mean, if, if you're going to commit a criminal act, you don't follow the law anyway. It's just the whole premise of uh, gun control is just ludicrous. <coughs> gun control is only makes tyrants and criminals happy. Criminals don't care about the law anyway. And the fewer people they got to worry about that's got guns, the happier they'll be, whether they're elected or not. criminals that is <laughs> i would say i would say make sure you call your congressman and just voice your opinion i mean we get enough out there well look what they did with the uh the bump stock mm-hmm. you know they tried the same they tried the same thing with that and that was just overturned in court that they they couldn't do that so now those are legal but look at all the people that pulled them off and got rid of them because ooh, i can't have that yeah, it's a matter of you know, are you willing to <laughs> roll the dice and see if they come? And and uh, I mean, currently the ATF doesn't have enough agents to go and hit everybody, but they'll go hit the high profile people, people that are known, and scare the rest of people to either comply or they'll uh, use it to get them to take them apart and be less effective guns, but uh. You know, it's, it's just all about control. They want to control you. And the sad part is, you know, and, and you have to understand Biden administration's using the power of the, of the or using the Bureau of, uh, to try to force this. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of good agents in there that are just trying to take care of the day-to-day things that have to be done or think that needs to be done with the ATF's daily stuff. 
and you got your your appointed bureaucrats at the top that are just lap dogs for the sick of fans <laughs> for uh for the tyrants at the top of the Democratic Party and some of the rhinos. I heard that Rod DeSantis down in Florida is uh, uh, already bucking the system on this arm brace thing. And uh, Florida's not going to comply. Yeah, I hope so. I might be moving all my special guns down to Florida. My, <laughs> I thought my it was. condo down there. I just... <laughs> I know, just taking taking the taking the Florida to visit. Yeah, I, I did think it was funny that I'm calling congressmen and you know raising cane in their offices and stuff about this, and uh, an hour later I get a text message uh, from Fox News saying Matt Gates has proposed legislation to abolish the ATF. I was like, win, win for the good guys. Go, go, Matt. I know it ain't gonna happen, but. Hey, put it out there and let people talk about it. You don't say something. If they don't say something and bring it up, it won't get heard. I mean, it's going to take someone at congressman's level or governor's level to get in the, the news cycle at all. Because we aren't going to get out there. They, they've got us so... <laughs> Guys, so throttled down. I'm not getting anything. I I post stuff, and if it's not got anything to do with guns and or anything like that, birthday party. Yeah, if it's just silly stuff, it go people. All kinds of people see it, like it. They just throttle it down. I'm just gonna start every post I make from now on. Happy birthday too, and then put the put the post on there. I want and see if it goes, see if it flies. Yeah. Uh, if y'all have not liked and shared this, please do because nobody's gonna see it. Like uh, Jim was saying, the guy's hidden. You can't you can't find it anywhere. I put the wrong words in the I put the wrong words in the thing and it blocked everything. Because normally you have like ten times as many people watching as we got right now. Mm-hmm. They're just throttling us down to nothing. But uh, we got six over on Rumble Live, so I appreciate you guys over on Rumble. Give us a thumbs up, please. Give us a like. We appreciate it. But uh, we would appreciate you guys sharing this as well. Because if not, it won't get through the algorithms. And it may not even that. They may, they probably got it no. where they can block it. But at least gives us a fighting chance to get out there <laughs> in, the, in the mainstream of the world here. But uh, let's see. Where are we at? We got. Uh, that's pretty much that for that. There's not much I'm else hate- to be said about it. No, I'm hate we're not at. I'm not. I'm hate we're not done at Shot Show with Oliver Buzz. They look like they're having a pretty good time out there. Yeah, week. yeah. Jared and Paul was like, "Where are you at?" I said, "Are you here?" I'm like, "No, I, I think uh, I, I've gotten texts and and uh, calls like, where are you at? I can't find you.'" I'm like, uh, "I'm not there." We're on uh, the disabled. We're on the disabled list. Yeah, we're just going to make it. You know, I hate. The worst part about SHOT Show is that if you get caught carrying there, they'll kick you out. And NSF, NSSF, the National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, is okay for you not being armed at the show. And all of the people that are exhibitors can't have guns that that are uh, working guns. They can't have their own personal firearms. They can't have live ammunition in the show. Uh, any of the P- media people cannot have, according to their rules, in the Sands Convention Center, you cannot be carrying in the Sands Convention Center. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I sort of it just, you know, you got it's a big expense to go to Las Vegas and spend a week. I mean, you're talking about thousands of dollars and you're talking about a lot of investment of time. I mean, because it's, you know, 10 hours a day. Uh, if you go to the range day, I, I always get invited to range day. You know, that's another day, another expense. And so it's a lot to invest in in the possibility that they will pat you down and, and say you can't come in here because you got a gun and kick you out. And then the con, the uh, the casinos out there have gotten more. They, they didn't used to be that way, but ever since that uh, – Whatever that was, where that shooting was going on out there, that nobody ever investigated or found out what happened or ever heard anything. Yeah, ever since then, 
uh, you come in with any kind of bags, they want to look in your bags. They want, you know, they want to check, want to know if you want to check your guns. <laughs> I come in, they, you need to check your guns in the safe. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're here for shot show. We can hold your guns for you. I'm like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> guns? And every time I would go to get in the elevator, you need to check any firearms. I'm like, no. <laughs> I, it's just irritating. I'm like, it's not your business, and legally, can I let you hold my guns? I mean, I don't think that's even legal. I mean, giving the possession of, of my firearms to somebody else to hold who I do not know who works for whatever the casino or the hotel's paying. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not good with that, and I'm not, I'm not doing that. I always carry concealed uh, everywhere I go. You can uh, only do that if you're Hunter Biden. Yeah, you can just, you know. You can just leave a gun somewhere, and the Secret Service will go get it for you, and, and then Lie on your form. get get rid of it because you know you're not allowed to have it anyway. But uh, that's all another matter. We're getting rambling here. We will thank uh, Primary Arms. You guys go over and check out primaryarms.com, and you can go frn forward slash pa and check out uh, all their selections. We have some patches and stickers up here if you want to help us out as well. We've got a subscribe star account and you guys are great that uh, have been uh, helping us with subscribe star. You go to yep. subscribe star.com forward slash God dash and dash guns. And uh, you'll find us there and you got the next two. Then we got the arm citizen of the week. All right. Hey, our next one is uh, our, our sponsors power tech lights. Hey, if you're looking for a good light for a weapon, for a hunting light or just a flashlight for your car, PowerTac makes a good one. Um, they got lifetime warranties on them. These things are like almost indestructible. And if by means you do tear it up, they got one of the best warranties that you'll ever get on it. So go check our buddies out at PowerTac.com. Use promo code God and Guns, and they'll give you 30% off um, on any of the lights that you like. If they're running a sale and they got 50% off, by all means, they're gonna you're gonna get the fifty percent off from theirs. But if it's not, use our promo code God and Guns, thirty percent off. Also, crossbreed holsters. I saw Professor Paul was out at crossbreed booth the other day wearing his chest rig with a blue gun in it. I thought that was that was kind of fun. <laughs> I know he's hating that, but go check out crossbreed holsters. If you're looking for a good holster, Troy and I both carry in crossbreeds. I have several different kind of crossbreeds. I have a chest rig for my 44 Magnum. I have the drop slide. We both carry in the Super Tuck Deluxe, which we both really like. They got a quality belt that if you're looking for a new belt, you won't go wrong with that. So go check our buddies out at crossbreedholsters.com. Hey, use the promo code over there, GNG, and they'll give you 10% off when you check out just for listening to the show and using our promo code. So go check them out. Arm says of the week, what's going on today? Hey, I got a pretty good one. This one came from Vancouver, Washington. A homeowner defended himself when an alleged intruder, I like it, alleged, 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 yeah, dead alleged. with a gun in his hand. If, if you're in my house, you're no longer alleged, you're there. Intruder broke into the residence on Thursday, December 15th, 2022. Around 11 p.m. that evening, the intruder managed to get up to the second story of the home and broke the window before crawling his way inside. As the intruder was scouring the second floor, he was confronted by the homeowner who was armed. Upon coming across the intruder in his house, the homeowner opened fire on the man before calling authorities. When police arrived at the home, they discovered the would-be robber deceased from his wounds. And that comes to us from katu.com and Portland, Oregon. Good deal. Imagine them having any problems in Portland. I can't. I can't imagine that. Uh, is Portland part of the United States anymore? I thought they uh, were something different. <laughs> I think they get they annexed part of that, didn't they? For the it's called uh, what do they call that thing? Uh, it's its own little something zone or something. Little communist zone over there. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what the, what they were called it. Matt uh, posted a video on the elder group that I posted over on the main guy guns group. And uh, he never even saw it 
on our on our website. And, he, and so he said, "Hey, here's that video I was talking about on the on the chat." Really? Like, yeah, but he can't see it because they block it. Well, we're gonna need to wrap this up. We're already whew, we're way into the next hour, and uh, you guys are probably uh, want to do a lot of and, Listen to us talk about uh, warts and uh, and arthritis and uh, sore knees and feet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we, we still got people hanging in watching with us. Yeah, you know, they're, 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 still, right. they're still commenting. I'm over on YouTube and Facebook. So I have not seen YouTube. I've got I've only got one uh, computer running tonight. Oh, there's a bunch of people. Over here. Cool deal. Brian, Matt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I've posted that that video, man, over on the God Guns uh, site and over. Uh, on some other places, other social media I'm on, but they're just throttling it down. You can't see that stuff. They, they block it out. So well, nobody, it's it. like, no, there's like no views. And I'm like, you know, we got several thousand people on this, on this page. There's no views. I don't believe it. So, but you know, it's not, it's they, not they lost Twitter. God, yeah. They lost Twitter. So they got to double down on everything else. It's not well, just our God and Guns page either. They, oh, they yeah. shadow ban both of us. Instagram? I mean, horribly. Yeah, my Instagram has went to nothing. I mean, I was getting 50, 60, 70, 80 on anything. I mean, anything I put up there. Now it's five, <laughs> three. It's like people that you talk to all the time. But uh, yeah, Brian said he hadn't seen anything from us on Facebook. Yeah, I've been posting every week, uh, every day of the week. I've been posting something up there. Uh, it just doesn't get seen it's just blocked out all right we're gonna wrap this puppy up appreciate you all joining us uh we'll try to get more regular it's just you know when you got old uh, disabled people like me and doug and that, that like to hunt and have other commitments that <laughs> we sometimes don't always get here i'm over hey, on, hey uh, i can i can also tell you on the facebook deal you know, it will not show up in your news feeds. You, you can't scroll through and, and catch anything mm -hmm. we post. But like on my personal one, if you actually go to my page or Troy's page or to God and Guns page, you will see it if you go that way. Yeah. They don't they don't stop it. They don't stop us from posting on it. They just stop you know, how they how they feed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're feeding me a bunch of junk. I mean, 90% of the stuff in the feed, it's like, I don't care anything about boxing. Or I don't care anything about, you know, people <laughs> in India, you know, having car wrecks. And, and it's just like, what is this TikTok garbage all over everything? It's just like a bunch of just useless videos and stuff popping up. I'm like, I don't have any relate, And so I'm just constantly blocking that stuff and like, I don't want to see, you know, gorillas fighting, you know, tigers and stuff. I'm like, what is, <laughs> what is this weird? Tigers. Yeah. And this, this, and it's, it's like posts from like a year ago, political posts from like a, where people are saying something like something happened a year, two years ago. Like it's current news. I'm like, this stuff's old. Mm -hmm. It's like recycling stuff. And I'm like, click. I don't want that. It's just like they're feeding you anything but anything real. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Bill, Bill Donovan said he got Facebook jail for posting Psalms 4610. Oh, yeah. I get post, I get blocked often on Bible verses. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's some kind of protected uh, sin class over there. If it's a protected sin, you know, they, they'll block you quick uh, when you post up uh, scripture. But, uh, yeah, they're trying to get that internationally that the Bible's declared hate speech. So they're, they're, the UN was trying to work out with uh, backdoor uh, Democrats to make Americans who put Bible verses and stuff out as participating in hate speech as an international crime that you can be prosecuted in an international court. Talk about some apples there now. That's what you call true treason. If you're going uh, you're going to subject your people to uh, foreign laws, and you're not going to defend your people with their inalienable rights, then you are a treasonous actor, and you should be treated as such. 
but you know that probably gets struck struck right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're We're wrapping up. up again. We're wrapping up because uh, I ain't get my foot up, and Doug needs to get his knee up, and uh, we've been talking so long that. Uh, we're probably boring you guys but we appreciate you guys hanging in here with us we always enjoy hearing your feedback and comments and stuff and we'll try to, to be better about uh being on here uh we say that a lot but uh we really mean it we are our, our intention is to be here every week but uh our lifestyles yeah. and audrey's been playing volleyball uh she's varsity so she's playing varsity or she's coaching the jv teams uh or she's practicing and, and it's wintertime and dark. My wife cannot see the drive. And so either I have to take her or a, a younger son, Gunner, has to take her. And so uh, it sort of makes it hard for us to record during the week. But now she's got games on week weeknights and on weekends. But all that will be ending soon here at the end of February. It'll be the end of it. But they've my five-foot-two uh, daughter is a, uh, a hitter on the front line. And so it's always a sight to see that she's up there blocking balls from girls that are five <laughs> ten, five eight, and she's uh, serving rockets over there the other side. I'm proud of her. She worked really hard to, to overcome her uh, disadvantage in height, which is strange because I'm taller than the average bear, but she just didn't gain height. Daphne's tall. She's five eight, five nine. Gunner's about five nine, five ten, something like that. Well, we're going to get off here. Send your feedback to Troy at GuyGunsPodcast.com or Doug at GuyGunsPodcast.com. Please tell your friends about us. Leave us an iTunes review. Like us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash GuyGunsPodcast. You can subscribe on YouTube for now. You can find us over on Instagram. We have a Wimkin page I haven't even looked at in at least three months. We've got Rumble that we're live on right now. And on the last look, we had like seven watch, seven people watching on Rumble. So that's starting to grow. We appreciate you. Seven? Yeah. Right now, watching over on Rumble. We appreciate you guys coming in and watching over there, supporting us over on Rumble. We are on MeWe as well. Our website is guidinggunspodcast.com. So until next time, Doug, have a blessed week. And keep your guns close, but keep your Bibles closer. You guys have a great night. Till we see y'all again, take care.